everyone, and welcome to CCA's Medical Minute Podcast. I'm Sherry Hughes, and this is episode 68. We're sponsored by Kroger Health, and I'm so happy to have with me today Sean Brown. And Sean is the service director at Mercedes-Benz Fort Mitchell. He's also a cancer survivor of two different types of cancer. And before, Sean, before we start talking about your experience, I want to know where's my EQB? Uh, that's that new electric <laughs> right at 75 SUV. and Dixie Highway is the answer I got those we, we I even put some in our courtesy fleet for customers oh, to try those are really sweet so we know that you know cars but the yes, other ma'am. really fascinating thing is that you know survivorship and um, from one survivor to another A club you're in yes ma'am that's right I'm so happy you you're here now thank tell, you for having me thank you for being here tell our audience Um, you were diagnosed with testicular and also Hodgkin's lymphoma. Non-Hodgkin's, yeah. Non-Hodgkin's. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, yes, ma'am. Two different kinds of cancer. Mm -hmm. When was this? And tell us a little bit about your story. So I was diagnosed in 2000. Mm -hmm. I had had some back pain, and and a very close friend of mine uh, whose dad ended up being my mentor called me and heard it in my voice and basically said, you're going to go get checked out, and I didn't have much of a choice, so thank God for her. And uh, I found out that day uh, that I had uh, testicular cancer, uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and some tumor markers in some other uh, organs. All two of those cancers at once you were diagnosed And three different types of cancer cell in each each place. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I can only imagine what might have been going through your mind because you were a young kid pretty much. I was 25 mm-hmm. uh, and it was, the, it was the first time honestly that I ever saw my father cry. He was a city of Cincinnati policeman for 30 years and he was a tough Superman mm-hmm. type person and I knew at that moment it was up to me. Yes. So with that kind of a diagnosis, and I remember you told me that at the time you were a new dad yeah. with a little baby girl. Yeah. My At the time, my daughter was about 18 months old. Mm. And uh, my big thing was that I did not want her to grow up not knowing who I was. And uh, I asked God for that amount of mm. time. And here I am. And look at, look, won't he do it? <laughs> yeah, as if she's 25, so here we are. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, tell us, what was your route to survivorship? I know you uh, you went to a doctor here locally, mm-hmm. but you ended up with this really yes, great doctor, uh, Einhorn, who is like world renowned. And a lot of yes. people know that name because of Lance Armstrong. He yes. also was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Correct. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I originally had the orchiectomy, which is where they remove the primary tumor here at University of Cincinnati. And um, because of the highly specialized nature of my cancer and the fact that Dr. Einhorn uh, has has really focused on that over the last mm-hmm. now 40 years mm-hmm. and really developed a lot of the treatments uh, with regard to the types of chemotherapy and the various treatments that you get, he was the natural choice. He's in Indianapolis. And uh, my parents uh, took me there every day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we, he came into the room the day that I met him and, and really made me feel at ease and gave me uh, mm-hmm. a lot of hope. And, uh, but you said it wasn't, it wasn't an easy no, journey because no. having, again, multiple types of cancers present. It's scary. What yeah. was your treatment plan like? Well, uh, we started with the original surgery to remove the primary tumor, and then we, uh, when I originally went there, uh, he said, you're going to need three or four cycles of chemotherapy, and you know what that's like. Yeah. Uh, so I, the interesting thing was there's a three-pronged approach that he uses, uh, and I had to take three different types of chemotherapy at the same time mm-hmm. and so uh, we got through the three cycles and as you know my uh, it, it debilitates you it makes oh, yeah. you very tired it takes a toll it does and uh, you know you lose the hair which mm-hmm. never came back 100 that's okay you still look marvelous oh, so. <laughs> um, hair is overrated anyway yeah i yeah. wasn't really using it and i save a lot of money on hair yeah products, i'm so sure so. you do uh, so uh and at the end of that i had a, a major uh, surgery where they they basically uh they do a an incision from the xiphoid process to the pelvic bone open you up Mm -hmm. because my lymphoma was uh, so pronounced in my uh, spinal Mm -hmm. column Mm -hmm. they had to go back into there to do the biopsy on those and at that point they were able to say we feel like we've gotten this under control and you're going to be fine and that took 
Mm-hmm. From start to finish, probably about eight or nine months. And, you know, typically when you hear about a testicular um, cancer diagnosis and even that uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, usually mm-hmm. there's a pretty good uh, possibility of, of a cure. Oh, um, yes. Which is good. But for someone like yourself mm-hmm. who really had three different types of mm-hmm. cancer situations going on, I remember you telling me that your prognosis at start wasn't really that good. Uh, about a 50% yeah. chance is what they said initially. I think Dr. Einhorn was a little bit more optimistic yeah. uh, because he's a very confident man. And he had seen the results of his work with people like Lance and mm-hmm. uh, and, and thousands of people. You know, I went back for a, 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 a gathering of survivors and I didn't realize just how many people had, had positively been affected yeah. by him. But there were thousands of us. And uh, he's very unassuming and, and – but – at the same time, very confident. Mm -hmm. And so that confidence and support, not just from him and my family and friends, that's really what what led me to be able to to go through that yeah. process and and it was long and it was hard and it was scary mm-hmm. um, but if you have uh, modern day medicine and you have the support of family and friends and in my case you develop a relationship with God very quickly when oh, you yeah. think you're going to meet him and <laughs> and so but he said not yet not yet, not yet. And, yeah. I, and I asked mm. you know I said I need this time for my daughter I, I want her to grow up knowing me and mm. uh, and and that was that that that's what happened That's and so true. i'm very grateful to not just the the medical community which has yeah. grown and and and, and exponentially it's, it's so much technology out there a hundred percent you're talking uh early like 2000 you said was it it was may of 2000 that i started the pro april may of 2000 that i started the process mm-hmm. by june i was in chemotherapy and i had the major surgery uh, November 8th of that year. After your chemo, did you have to do other rounds like uh, radiation or any other type of uh, cancer treatments? No radiation, mm-hmm. but I did have to do a lot of follow-up because mm-hmm. they want to make sure after the first year that there's nothing coming back, after yeah. the second year. Lots and of then scans. It, yes, CT scans and uh, MRIs, things like that. Uh, and then five years, mm-hmm. and then and then at that point they say, yeah. we feel very confident. and oh, yeah. And that's that's where we're at today. So today, you you still go in every so often? Is it once a year, or are you just I'm you're done. good? I, I'm wow. good. I, I I see my primary care physician yeah. like everybody, and uh, you know I've got other things and kidney stones and things yeah. that come yeah. with age and stuff like that. But as far as the the cancer. I'm happy to report that as a result of those things, Dr. Einhorn being the chief mm-hmm. one, but the other things yeah. involved in prayer circles and things like that, here I am. Yeah, and you know what? Um, all these years later, you get to encourage and inspire and educate because I got to tell you, when I was diagnosed, you encouraged not only my heart, my soul, my spirit, you spoke a lot of life into me yes, and ma'am. you shared what you had gone through and you know you walk around daily and you meet people and you never know what they've gone through or what they're going through everybody has a story yeah. don't they everybody does have yeah. a story so today you're now you know what doing well your daughter is an adult now yes i'm very fortunate to have to have been able to uh, to raise her mm-hmm. help raise her and i uh i i owe it all to the medical community and support by people around me and, yeah. I, and I give all that credit to, to everybody else because I could not have done it without everybody else's help. But yes, when I, when I see people and when mm-hmm. we met, yeah. you, you were just starting that process. Yeah. And I could see that you were concerned and nervous and all the things that come along mm-hmm. with it. And that's all very natural. Thank you. Well, <laughs> but you, you handled it with class and grace as you do everything else. Mm-hmm. And that's very important because it shows character and that helps as you go through it and what i hope other people know not only those that are dealing with a cancer diagnosis but their families their friends i hope that they know that first and foremost be educated know that when something is not feeling right get checked out mine was back pain exactly right right. back pain. yes go get that uh checkup Talk to someone, tell them, be educated, even about, you know, cancers now are so pervasive and so prevalent yes. that everybody kind of knows somebody that's been maybe diagnosed with a cancer at yeah, some point in yeah, time. Yeah. Right. So don't dismiss it. Um, but you know what, Sean, I just want to thank you for coming in because you definitely not, have not only inspired me, I'm sure you've inspired our uh, podcast listeners too, because you're, you're proof that, you know what, getting a cancer diagnosis and three different diagnoses at mm-hmm. the same time doesn't mean that you know what all is lost almost a quarter century later here i am because of those 
uh, things. And I, and I want to pay that forward to people like you who are nervous and, and just starting the, the journey. Yeah. And, and it's, it's helpful to know that you're not in it alone. You've done that. You've done that. And um, thank you so much for being here to thank share you your story. Me. Thanks to all of you for watching our Medical Minute podcast. Please subscribe and share it. And, um, you know, just make sure that you're taking good care of you and that you're educating and learning more about the world of cancer because we're survivors and we know that there are other survivors out there too. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.